Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video about mental health and looking after your mental health in lockdown. Um, obviously, times like these mean people with mental illness or just suffering with their mental health will be struggling. And as someone that deals with mental health problems myself, I definitely have felt this. So I've tried to kind of nip it in the bud and do anything I can to avoid worsening the situation. I know everyone's at different points in their lives and everyone's struggling with different things, but this is just what's helped me. So it might not automatically apply to you, but just, I hope it helps. So I've got my notes written down, so that's why I'm looking down. Um, my first piece of advice is don't compare yourself to others. Don't feel obliged to be productive just because someone you know is writing a book or doing a 5K. It doesn't make your achievements any less valid. Everyone's reacting differently to lockdown, as I said, and facing different challenges. So do what you can, not what you feel you should. Remember that people will always be selective with how they present themselves online. So you're only seeing a one dimensional, superficial version of their reality. So you're not seeing all the times that they've struggled with their mental health. I know that's definitely the case with people I follow. You definitely pick up the fact that they're not being wholehearted with what they're sharing online and I think that's why it's so important to talk about mental health and use your platform for good because otherwise people do think they're alone and that's not the case whatsoever. My next piece of advice is distract yourself. This is so important if you're an anxious person or you suffer with intrusive or obsessive thoughts because the news is throwing all these scary facts and scary stories at us which obviously it's important to stay updated and stay um in the loop with things like that but it can be very detrimental because we've got this sen sense of you know unpredictability we don't know what's happening we have no kind of firm sense of what's happening in the future so kind of avoid the news as much as you can if it does set you off but still try and keep in the loop every so often um, for me, what I'm doing to distract myself is I actually, funnily enough, don't watch TV that much and I have a Netflix subscription and I pay for it so I might as well make use of it. So I've been catching up with my favourite series and having virtual FaceTime dates with my friends to watch Killing Eve and um, watch films together and it's a way of connecting with someone when you, you're not there to talk about things together so it's something to keep you occupied. There's also um, live theatre performances being streamed for free online. So if you do like, I think there's ballets, there's Shakespeare's, um, I think Frankenstein is coming soon with Benedict Cumberbatch. So if you look on YouTube, you can find them for free. I watch Fleabag with my friend Phoebe on um, FaceTime and there's also Netflix party, I believe. So you can hook up um, on a Chrome extension, you and some friends is Netflix and you can watch the same thing at the same time and like pause it and talk to each other about it. So that's a really great way to stay connected. I know also I've been having um, like Zoom calls with my friends, um, like quizzes, trivia nights. So just keeping in touch with friends and family. So it's great to dedicate time to the, the things that we don't get chance to do in everyday life. So the things that we always go, oh, I'm gonna do that or I want to do that, but we always put off. So for me, it's um, the boring stuff. So checking up with finances, so what I've spent money on, where it's going, checking that I'm not overspending, which I am. Um, and like the boring organization work is a chance to like reset yourself, whether that's like a deep clean of your house or living space. Or for me, I'm trying to look at like my phone storage, my laptop storage, because I find everything's quite cluttered and I can't organize myself as best. Um, if it's all cluttered and messy. So I know these tasks are quite time consuming and laborious and boring, but they can be split up over a few days. And then once you've actually done them, you get this real sense of accomplishment because there's a visible thing that you've done, such as having a really clean space, having a really clean and organized phone. So I think that's a really important thing to stay distracted. So another thing I'd say is super important is if you're living with family, friends, a partner, try and find a balance between spending time with them, doing fun things, but also giving yourse yourself space and time. It's easy to get stuck between an extreme of like, either isolating yourself completely and being very like, cut off and always spending time in your room doing your own thing. But then 
also you can feel really suffocated and trapped if you spend too much time with others because personally I find it quite exhausting when I'm always talking to people and spending time with people so maybe like it's just finding a time to dedicate to doing something with them whether that's a board game or trivia um, and as I said there's like video apps like zoom that you can use um, but remember it is so important to give yourself time to be alone and focus on yourself I think lockdown is a horrible time for so many but we have to make the best out of a really bad situation and work on healing ourselves growing kind of putting effort into becoming who we want to be and it's as I said it's just finding the light in the situation so for me self-care and kind of spending time on my own so having a bath yoga meditation um, I'm trying to get more into journaling and reading because I have so many books to read so as I said it's kind of picking up things that you want to do that you never really have time to um, and yeah that make you happy next piece of advice is try and form a routine or some sort of schedule I know a lot of people are really struggling because they don't have the the sense of routine and structure that they're used to so getting up at a certain time getting home at a certain time and also if you're doing your work at home you might feel like everything is in one place so you're sleeping you're working you're socializing in the same place as all the other things and it feels like you never really get a break from it so first thing i'd recommend is kind of separating your work and um social life so maybe using the kitchen table to do your work rather than in your room or somewhere where it's not associated with relaxation and kind of social time so also wake up at a similar time every day and try and go to sleep at a similar time every day and get a healthier sleep schedule so this will take quite a while to kind of kick in I know my sleep schedule has definitely gone downhill. I'm usually like a nine hours a night girl and now it's more like six. Um, but I'm still trying to wake up early-ish, um, although it's getting later every day. Um, so for my A-level work, I'm trying to follow my schedule as if I was in school. So for example, today, I only have two lessons. I have double English. So I'm trying to do those straight away. And then I've got the afternoon to do whatever I want, which is usually homework and extracurricular things but yeah just trying to focus on sticking to a schedule and breaking things up into manageable, manageable chunks rather than doing everything in one like big exhausting session um it does help if you plan something to look forward to in the evening or afternoon so it's like a reward for working hard and it gives you incentive so for me it's often like facetiming friends and watching a film with my parents doing something that just takes my mind off things completely and i can kind of turn turn over to a new page and think okay right my mind's off work now that doesn't matter until tomorrow my last piece of advice is be realistic with your daily goals so it's much better to set three um, manageable goals that you can actually accomplish than set 10 kind of huge um, time consuming things that you won't be able to do because even if you accomplish three of those ten that's exactly the same as a achieving and accomplishing three out of those three that you set but you'll feel far more accomplished if you tick off everything on your to-do list so make it shorter and more like realistic rather than huge and kind of you know very unrealistic um so what I do is I focus on every day having like a priority activity. So for me, it's essays at the moment. I take three essay based subjects um, and following it with a short and simple task. So often this is a self care task um, to improve my mood, but also something that you can gain from. So maybe watching a documentary or reading a book. Um, and I think this is so, so important to remember self care in itself, whether that's having a shower or going on a run it's still an accomplishment you're still achieving something it may not feel as productive it may feel like you're wasting your time but if you're putting energy and investing energy into yourself and working on yourself making yourself as healthy um, and happy as you can that has um, knock-on effects on your work it has knock-on effects on your productivity on your mood so it's actually a very, very worthwhile thing to do. So don't feel guilty about putting time into self-care, putting time into yourself, because inevitably that will help you do the best you can with work.
I hope this video was helpful to some of you. I try to make it short and sweet rather than, you know, steaming off a load of things you've already heard. Um, these are just things that have helped me personally and to be honest with you I may seem really cheery in this video but over the last couple of days I have been quite hormonal and quite up and down so please be aware that just because you are having a down point it doesn't mean it's permanent you just need to be aware of that and that, that's the same thing when you're having a really like amazing day you need to be aware like that's not forever we are humans our emotions fluctuate and all you can do, what's in your control, is looking after yourself and your body and your mind. So try and focus on that. And remember, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you'll all be able to hug your friends and family and see them and do all those things that you want to do soon. And I know it's so, so stressful and so scary, but you're doing amazingly and I'm really proud of you. And I'm proud of myself too for getting through this and trying to work on myself.